Welcome to Rhema Praise. I'm so glad you tuned in with us today. We got such exciting news to talk about today. And, uh, you know, we just recently took a trip to the South America to our Ramas down yes. there. Uh, we started out in, in Capita Grande, Brazil. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I mean, full auditorium, every service. Oh, yes. uh, the people were so hungry to hear the word oh, of God. Oh, yes, yes. And so yes. excited that we were there. And then uh, in Sao Paulo, went, went from there to Sao Paulo. Brazil. Brazil. Mm -hmm. There from Argentina. And that's our first time to go to Argentina. And it, it was just a huge, huge crowd. Uh, and the Spirit of God moved. And then, of course, to Peru. And uh, the, and their new facility, mm -hmm. uh, which used to be a Jewish synagogue, yes, but now it uh, God worked it out where they got they got this this building, and it was just tremendous, and the, the tremendous power of God was available. Remember, at the I, we had a healing service that night. Yes, and a man was in a wheelchair, had broken his hip. Yeah, uh, you prayed for him. The healing power of God went into him, and he started walking. Yeah, he was healed. Yeah. He couldn't walk, and he got up mm -hmm. and started walking. Then we went to Colombia, to Rama, Colombia, for another great event. And any of you that are partnered with us, uh, you, th this is what you're helping do all That's over right. the world. Not only this broadcast, but all over the world. And then Mexico City. Oh, yes. Oh, we uh, had a graduation there. A graduation for one of the Ramas in, in Mexico. Well, actually, I think they brought three of the campuses together yes. for a graduation. And then we had a healing service on uh, on uh, Saturday night, I guess mm -hmm. it was, and then we preached Sunday morning. The church. But, in the church. But Saturday, I want you to listen to this testimony of the healing power of God from the from the Saturday night uh, healing service. Yes, this lady said... Uh, this, uh, this was sent to us from the... Uh, uh, the uh, Rama, Mexico. Rama, Mexico. Our directors down there, Tim and Rhonda Rogers, they sent us this testimony that... that that was sent to them yes. by this lady. And this is what she said. I left at the school in which I work a poster and bulletin uh, advertising the healing service. The school is also a church. A little uh, more than a year ago, the associate pastor of this church uh, suffered a cerebral, cerebral palsy. The part of brain that controlled the language was greatly damaged, and he was told that it was uncurable and that he would never recover. He could speak, but extremely slow. He went to the healing service and his wife told us that since then, because he was prayed for that night, since then he has improved a lot and now he can speak fluently. A lot of people are amazed of this. They said, what a wonderful miracle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. And I, I know that excites you, uh, Word Partner Club people there, because you, you got a part in that. Yes. You may never see this man, but you had a part in his healing. And anybody there that's watching that would like to be a partner with us, all you got to do to go to rhema.org and slash WPC. And, that's right. And just uh, all the information's there and praise the Lord. That, and you say, well, what's the word partner club member do? Well, it's somebody that sends a monthly offering, uh, whatever you can afford that's to right. send. Uh, large or small, doesn't make any, when it all comes together, we're able to do tremendous amount preaching the gospel yes. all over the world. Well, we talked about that, but let's talk about what I'm going to speak about today. Yes. I'm going to speak about using what you've got. You know, a lot of people would say, well, I'd like to do something for God, but I don't have the talent. I don't have this. Hey, use what you got. He will take what you've got and he will help you to be what you need to be. That's right. You know, uh, he, Moses said that he couldn't do some things, and God said, what's that in your hand? He said, oh, it's this old shepherd stick. He said, but, and, but he, he took the shepherd's rod, yes. and that's what he held out over the Red Sea, and it departed. See, God took what he had and used it. God will take what you have and use it if you'll make it available to him. So let's go right now where I'm speaking on the subject, using what you've got. 
Colossians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 8. Colossians chapter 2, beginning with verse number 8. The King James says, Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principalities and powers. Now I also want to read that from the NLT as well as the Message Bible. The NLT says, New Living Translation, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For Christ, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ who is the head over every ruler and authority. Now the Message Bible. Watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in Him so you can see and hear Him clearly. You don't need a telescope or a microscope or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without Him. When you come to Him, that fullness comes together for you too. His power extends over everything. You know, it seems that we live in a society that is materialistically driven. There's always something new and better coming out. And you absolutely have to have it. Or that's what they tell you anyway. You know, every time there's a new release of an iPhone or an iPad, people are camped out waiting to be the first one to get it. You know, and it'll be the same way again when they announce another one they're going to release it. You know, people will line up for days to buy tickets to sporting events and concerts and pay inflated prices, travel great distances just so they can scream their head off at a concert or a ball game. And in just a, just a couple of years or so, whoever they were screaming for may be gone and a new, new talent, a new person, a new team has taken their place. Man, how many of you see all the commercials advertising all the new cars? In just a few months, all those commercials are going to be obsolete because the new models will be coming out. I mean, when you, you got your car, it had the latest and the greatest on it until the new one come out. It seems that we are always never complete. We're, we are bombarded with the idea that we need this new product, new and improved. You know, I, uh, I got one package off of the shelf, and it said new and improved, and I have one of the old one, and I, I begin to read down there, and I'm trying to figure out how it's new and improved. <laughs> because... It looks to me like it's still got the same ingredients in it that it had to, on before they said it's new and improved. I come to the conclusion all the only thing that was new and improved was the boxing. <laughs> the package. I think sometimes that's the case. Now sometimes I think they may add something to it, but you know, you're not complete if you don't have this. You're not in the group if you don't have this. You know, many people judge their self-worth by these types of superficial things. It's nice to have all this stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's nice. But that's not what makes you complete. 
Now, the world will try to tell you that. You need all this to make you complete. You know, that's what it says there. Don't let anybody cheat you through philosophies, the empty deceit, according to the traditions of men. Verse 10 there says, you are complete in him, in Christ Jesus. You know, you can be on the cutting edge of technology today and it's obsolete tomorrow. You know, we can, we can get a, a new light or something here and they can get it and it's obsolete tomorrow. They'll come up, they, they're making a new one. But you know what? Jesus is never obsolete. He never, go, he never goes out of style. You know, I, I've been wearing these sweater vests and everything the last little last year or so. But you know what? Next year, if I come up here with one of these on, I'll just say, man, God, what's he, don't he know that that's out of style? <laughs> so, you know, how, how many of you know what I'm talking about? I found out if you put some of your clothes back and and if you don't gain too much weight, after a few years, they're back in style again. <laughs> Anybody found that out? <laughs> you know, everybody talking about the skinny jeans and all that. Hey, go back into the, go back into the late 50s and early 60s. They were in style back then. How many of you remember they were in style back then? Just a little bit different. Ladies had those, they, they call them stirrup pants, and they had a stirrup in them that went around the bottom of your foot, and they were, they were skinny just like these things are, you know. And, and, you know, boots was in for a while, but now, you know, boots are back in style again, you know. I like boots all the time myself. I like to wear a couple of boots. I like boots. But, hey. None of that stuff, it all, it goes, it comes, it goes, it comes. But hey, we're complete in Jesus Christ and it doesn't change. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It says in Malachi, I am the Lord, I am God, and I change not. That means he's in style last week, next week, 20 years from now. He's still in style. Come on now. See, but the world will try to convince you that you need all of these things to be successful. But I tell you, you're complete in him. If you have Jesus, you have everything you need. Now, the world will try to convince you that you're inadequate that you're nothing without this product or without this or without that. It, this is what you need. But that's a lie. You know, the world tries to say you're defeated, you're a failure if you don't have this or that. You're inadequate if you, you, you know. But all you need is Jesus. Now let's look at Exodus 4.2. Exodus 4.2 in NLT. Then the Lord asked him, what is in your hand? A shepherd's staff, Moses replied. The world tells us we need more stuff. God's asking, what do we have? What's in your hand? What have you got? He wants us, God wants us to get to the place where we start thinking, stop thinking about our inadequacies we stop thinking about what we don't have and how much somebody else has because the enemy wants to convince you that you're inferior and you're inadequate. See, because the Bible says that he, St. Corinthians 4, 4, he is the God of this world, the devil's God of this world. So he's always working on people through all kinds of things to convince you that you're inadequate, you're inferior, you can't do it, and you got to have all this stuff, so you keep buying all this and doing all this, and nothing is helping. But God is asking you, what do you got? What do you got? 
That's, I mean, he asked Moses, what do you got in your hand? But it, it, he's saying to you, what do you have? Now, you know, if you listen, you can almost hear Moses, or almost hear uh, God talking to Moses. And he said, Moses, my people are in bondage. You're going you're gonna to get them out. You're going to go down there to Egypt and get them out. But man, listen, to what, listen and hear what Moses had to say. Not me, Lord. You, you tapped the wrong guy on the shoulder. It ain't me. No way. Don't you understand? I can't even speak good. I'm not eloquent of speech. Besides that, they won't listen to me. He had all the reasons that he was inferior and that he was inadequate. And God said to him, what do you got? Well, I got this shepherd's staff that I used to herd sheep with and it helps me walking over the rough ground up here in the mountains. I had this thing for a long time. Oh, you have? The Lord said to him, well, hey, this is what God said to him in, in that 417. Just, just skip down there. We said, we were in, we were in 4-2, right? Just skip down there a few verses. All right. But take the staff in your hand so you can perform miraculous signs with it. Take the same old rod, the same staff. And with that, you've been herding, herding sheep, you've been helping you walk, you're going to do miraculous signs. You'll bring a great deliverance to my children. See, what I want you to say, what I want you to realize is that Moses was saying, um, to, God was saying to Moses, what you have is all you need. Stop thinking on the negative side. Stop thinking about what you can't do and what you don't have and start looking at what you have. Yes. And start doing something. You know, if you go you know, where we started reading there in the first, where, where we were reading there, uh, 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 there in uh, uh, Exodus uh, four two, you go on down, you read there, and uh, the Lord told him throw it down, and it become a snake, he told him pick it up, and it become back turned back into his shepherd's staff, his rod. See, to Moses it was just an old old shepherd's staff, but to God it was something that could, he could use. It may be, you, you, you may think, well, I don't have anything. I mean, that, yes, you do. If you'll turn your life over to God and turn what you, your talent, your times, your money, everything else over to God, God will use you and you'll find out that you'll become a blessing and you'll be blessed while you're being a blessing. Hello. Hey, let's go, let, let's go to another story. A guy by the name of Gideon. The voice of the Lord come to him saying, Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. You're a mighty warrior. Who, 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 me? <laughs> man, Lord, don't you know? I am from the least tribe, or the, I'm from the least family in my tribe. I'm from the least tribe, and... <clears throat> I, I, I can't do it. I'm inadequate. I'm inferior. He's telling God. You know, I wonder sometimes if people don't realize when God comes down and taps on the shoulder and says, hey, I want you to do this, I want you to do that, uh, he knows who he's tapping on the shoulder. He knew who Gideon was. But you see, many times because we have been so programmed, we think that we can't do it because of where we come from, who our family is. We've been told that we're inferior. We've been told we're inadequate. We've been told you can't do it. You ever notice God take he, he uses different things to save people. 
to deliver people. Some people think they got to have all this and have all that for God to do. No, hey, look at, look at, look at that ragtag bunch that he chose as his disciples. some fishermen and they weren't considered very high on the society pole and a tax collector that was considered the worst there is I mean you know he, he, he took you ever notice that all, the people he used in the Bible they were the most unqualified ha the most not adequately prepared people that they were. But you know what? They gave him what they had. Peter told a man at the gate called Peter, hey, I don't have any, I don't have any money in my hand. I ain't got that, but I do have something else. I'll give it to you. This Rahab, she was delivered and her family was delivered cause, and she was saved because she hung a red cord out. That's what she had. She hung it out. That's what the, that's what the spy said. To, you notice every time that somebody took what they had and used it, God brought about salvation or victory. You may be here today and you may be like Moses. You're between the Red Sea and the Egyptian army and there's no way out. What do you got in your hand, Moses? My shepherd's, rat, my step, shepherd's staff. Hold it out over the water. When he did, the water rolled back. This morning, God's asking you, what do you got? I'll use it. Amen. You might be here this morning and say, well, I don't have, I, I need deliverance, but I don't have much. You got a Bible? That's God, show, God saying to you, hey, you got deliverance in your hand right here. I know if you will take what I was talking about and say, okay, God, here I am, and here's what I've got, he will take it and use it, and you'll be surprised what's going to happen. Man, I am so excited about our Believer's Authority curriculum that we've put together. This book, The Believer's Authority, yes. is the book that actually really launched Dad's ministry, so to speak, because he came out with this, Our Believer's Authority, what we understand. This book is sold million, oh, way well over a million copies by now. I know years ago it was a million, so it yes. could be a million and a half now, called The Believer's Authority. But we put together a package, uh, and we call it The Believer's Authority Curriculum Package. Now, what all have you got in this Believer's Authority complete? Well, package. first of all, we have four CDs that your yeah. dad uh, speaks on the Believer's, Believer's Authority. Authority. Uh-huh. And then uh, we have hit, uh, four CDs on reigning in life as a king. king. Yes. And then, of course, the book, Believer's Authority. And this is actually the legacy edition. edition. So yes, it's that an expanded. We, that we expanded it after he went on to be with the Lord. We That's took some right. more material that he had taught in later years yes. and added to this book. And then this is brand new. Brand new. Yes. The Believer's Authority Study Guide. And this goes right along with the book. With the book. Mm -hmm. There's questions uh, to answer. For um, each chapter. Yes, that's right. It is an awesome thing for study groups, for your own personal study. Own personal study, mm -hmm. study groups, small groups, huh. pastors, you can do a, you could do your whole Bible Wednesday night Bible study or That's Thursday right. night Bible study. That's right. Now this is normally 89, $85.90, but we're going to offer it for $59.95. That's a special, a special, offer. special offer yes. for this month. A savings of twenty five dollar ninety five cents. You might as well have twenty six dollars because what right. can you do with a nickel anymore? <laughs> That's right. So hey, you want to go right there right now and go get on the computer and yes. order this right now. You want to get a hold of that while you can. 
Well, we got a lot of things coming up. Uh, That's we're going right. to be in Madison, Alabama on uh, the 24th through the 27th at Cornerstone Word of Life Church. Yes. Uh, Mark and Rhonda Garver Church there. And then in September 7th. Through the 10th. Through we're the 10th. Jonesboro, Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, they're at Living Word Church, Pastors Denny and Danny Beavers. Yes. And then we're going to be at a special, special meeting, su su special Sunday in St. Joseph, Illinois on Sunday, September the 14th at Living Word Family Church. Right, there. right. But hey, your KTF. Yes. Kindle, Kindle the, Flame the Flame Women's Conference is coming up September 25th through 27th, Thursday right. through Saturday. Hey, go register now, you ladies. Register online. You can go to rhema.org slash KTF. Hey, our husbands, go register your wife and get her set up and get her hotel rooms surprise and everything. Her. And surprise her. Yes, yes ladies is, like surprises. It's a great, it's a great, great con conference, one of the best women's Absolutely. conferences around. But also, it's not too late to still register for... Rama Bible Training College, yes. a 2014-2015 school year. Or you can just go and request an informational DVD mm -hmm. at Rama or actually rbtc.org slash trendsetters and request the DVD. Or you can just go online and, and fill, out an fill out the application right yes. there. And so, hey, you know what? We want to thank you for partnering with us and for helping us to bring hope, hope. Help and healing to the world. Kenneth E. Hagen's classic book, The Believer's Authority, has changed countless lives and nations. Christians everywhere have discovered their authority in Christ. Now, believers can take their understanding to the next level. The Believer's Authority Study Guide features 10 lessons with all new material. It is designed to accompany the Believer's Authority Legacy Edition, which includes the original text of the Believer's Authority plus added messages from Reverend Hagen, a special life and legacy historical introduction, and a collection of commemorative photographs. And Kenneth E. Hagen's four CD teaching set, The Believer's Authority, plus Brother Hagen's four CD series, Reigning in Life as a King. Man was created to reign as a king in this life. You can have the entire Believer's Authority curriculum for your home library for only $59.95. Just call 1-888-PRAISE-8 or go to rhema.org and order today. Thank you for watching Rhema Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.